All right, this is lesson uh, 7.2.1. And what we're talking, a little finish up for him here. And we're going to make a little change to it, though, on kind of how you think about the slope inter I know a lot of times when we think of being drawn, um, you know, if you've got a line, you're used to seeing a line that goes up something like this. And what we normally think about is if you sell five packages of cookies, then you make $5. If you sell 10 packages of cookies, then you make somewhere around $8. And that's the typical way that we look at slope intercept. But there's other ways to look at slope intercept, and, and it's important that you understand and can relate those to other situations. So today we're going to talk about it at like a rate of speed, okay? So for example, if we were to take letter A here, which says 3x plus 2, and we were to think about that as a rate of speed, I'm going to just kind of change the color on my arrow here real quickly. There we go. The plus 2 means that the person who had the rate of 3 had a head start of 2. So they're right there. And then they were walking basically, what could we call it, 3 feet per second, 3 yards per second, 3 miles per minute, whatever you want to call it. Um, but they're running, they're walking at a pace of about 3 something. If we were doing this with like a... Uh, a walking meter or something, a walking radar gun type thing, this would be three feet per second. Two, two foot head start, and then they're walking at a rate of three feet every single second. And it would look like something like that. However, when you'd watch it, though as it was going on, when you'd say go, the person would start walking. You'd see the line start expanding. If they walked it correctly, it would keep expanding until you get to your third second, and it would look something like that. Okay? So, if that's the case, then what would, let's do letter B, y equals negative x plus 10. Well, in this case, they have a 10 foot head start. However, this person, because it's a negative, remember the negative sign means negative, it can mean subtract, or it can mean do the opposite. Well, if we do walk the opposite direction, we're not walking forwards, we're actually walking backwards, so our 10 foot head start and one foot per second, I'm trying to get that, there we go, is right there, until after 10 seconds, we would be back to the starting spot. Hopefully that makes sense. Obviously, if a, if a race were going to be, if we took the first person that walked three feet per second, had a two foot head start, and we have the second person that had a 10 foot head start, but they were confused and they walked the wrong direction, you could ask yourself the simple question. After how many seconds, or at how many seconds would the two meet? Well, after two seconds, they would have met eight feet away from the starting line. After that, line A would have been walking farther away. And line B, who is confused, would be getting closer and closer to the starting line. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's do a couple more here. Eliminate this line, we'll eliminate this line. Now we've got C. C is at y equals 6. Well, what does 6 mean? 6 means that he's got a head start. He's got a head start at 6. And no matter how many seconds go by, C is still at 6. If you ask me, it seems like C is standing still. He's not getting any closer or any farther away from the starting line. He's just standing there. Maybe C's dead. Maybe that's why he's not moving. Or maybe he's just sleeping. All right, let's try one more here. Letter D. This one should be fairly simple for you. Letter D says Y equals 2X plus 4. By now, you should know the starting point is at, that's right, positive 4. And he's moving at a rate of 2 feet per second. 2 feet, 2 feet, 2 feet, and so on. You know, if we compared all these people, and we took the y, the negative x plus 10 person, and we took the person that started at 2 feet, and he went 3 feet per second, like so, and we had the person that was just at y equals 6. You could really answer a lot of questions with this. For example, when did line C and line D, when did those two meet? Well, they met after one second at six feet. Well, when did line A, I'm sorry, line B 
and line C meet. Well, line B, which is right here, and line C, which is right here, they met right there at four seconds and at six feet. Who's walking the fastest? Well, I would say the person that's got the steepest slope is walking the fastest. In fact, three people all met two seconds and eight feet away. And those three people that met there were the lines A, line B, and line D. But you can clearly see that line A is now starting after that point is the farthest, is walking the fastest and getting the farthest away. Because his slope is going up the fastest. So it's pretty easy to see. If you can judge this as a rate of speed, you can start to figure out who's walking faster, who's walking slower, who's confused and going the wrong direction, who's standing still, sleeping, or is dead. You can figure out all those things. So what I want you to do now is forget about these four lines that I've graphed. I want you to graph line E, F, G, and H. Graph all four of those. And then figure out um, when the different ones cross and when the different ones, um, who's walking the fastest and all that information. This is useful because when you come to class over the next few days, we're going to start looking at a problem called the big race, where we have people on tricycles moving um, in a race, and you've got to figure out who's going to win the race given some certain clues. Thanks so much for listening. We will see you in class tomorrow.